Hi there, my name is Cristobal Cobo and I'll try to address some of the things that were discussed in the previous videos. I have to say that I'm thrilled with the discussions that have been taking place and I fully appreciate the invitation of having you here. And I'll refer to something really, really concrete. Um, concrete in terms of time, but we can discuss and we can write all the books that we want about that. And it's what I would like to call reinventing trust. I'm going to use this low technology uh, because that, that has to do with what, what I'm going to discuss today. Uh, chapter one. I will divide my talk in three small chapters. One is openness. Openness is something um, that is a quite abstract concept. But it's something that we saw in our early childhood in many ways. We were taught to share the things that we had with our brothers, sisters. We were taught to be transparent with others, with the feelings, with our thoughts. Um, and many of the things that you try to promote in the, in the early childhood are incredibly aligned with the idea of openness, a community of people that can trust each other and can collaborate and can make um, higher goods that benefit everyone. And this is something that you also will find in schools and you will find in a large number of consistent communities which are em embedded and empowered by the idea of making um, that the contribution of everyone will make something better. And in order to make that happen you have to flow with skills, knowledge, and the sharing of, of the things that you can contribute. That is what I make a community something consistent. Now, with the explosion of the internet as we know it, uh, we tend to see that many of these values came back. We saw that the internet is a space of free flow of information in which all the ideas were valid, Every voice which was tolerant to the rest one had an important position and the internet was become this speaker corner in which all the voice could meet the attention of other potential audience. And our openness was grounded in the backbone of the idea of internet where you promote creativity in which people can collaborate with others and again, you might find this connection between some of these techie concepts of how we understand in current society with these early principles that you saw uh, in the childhood that we referred earlier. Right? So there is this beautiful connection, and uh, I will criticize that in a minute, don't, don't get worried, but there is this beautiful connection between these communities of collaboration, the open source community, this idea of the architecture of participation, which was grounded in the idea of trusting others. Uh, to go perhaps one layer deeper, you might find the, the description, the implementation of openness, for instance, in science, in which people produce science with others in a more transparent way, sharing the successful result but also the failures. People share in a more open way the dissemination of science. Um, as well as in education. Today a lot of people are discussing these days open education. The idea of putting the contents online for free, the idea of releasing some of the licenses to allow other people to reuse those contents, the idea of um, moving from incredibly expensive textbooks to textbooks that can be do-it-yourself. All these implementations, as well as open data, uh, open government, uh, are all different communities which are grounded in the platform of the internet in which uh, you can contribute in this common architecture of common interests grounded or connected, let's say, uh, and the idea of sharing knowledge, sharing expertise. Um, and all that is incredibly fine. That is my stage number one. Uh, second point. I will call it um, let's try to see the flip side of that 
Um, remember when Google used to say, uh, don't be mean? Remember when we uh, thought that every single voice was going to have a space and we would protect the privacy of everybody else? So when you trust companies, instead of reading the long side of agreements, the long terms of an agreement, you simply trust the organizations and you just press agree. I don't know how many of you read the whole thing, but many of us don't. Um, remember when you saw the idea of companies providing social networks for free and you said, that's awesome. Uh, and more and more people were landing into the digital environment to share information. Uh, this thing has been happening the last few decades, but also is happening today. And now, in the Edward Snowden era, uh, in the Julian Assange era, we understood in an unfortunate and sad way that we were incredibly naive in terms of how we were allocating the trust to entities that we thought were protecting our information. So, of course, we can say that those comp there are many companies that were playing mean and playing with our naive understanding of trust. At the end of the day, the main responsibility was in us, the users. It's super easy to blame them, to blame X or Y government, but at the end of the day, the problems won't be solved by third parties. The community needs to take a more active position. So, in the last few years, in the, in the European Commission, for instance, we have seen a number of initiatives trying to push to have a more active way of protecting the spy, the sniffers, all those who misuse the personal information of us, which were trusting this idea of openness, but now we are understanding that instead of opening information, we were giving a lot of fuel for somebody else's business. Um, we now have this um, understanding that we probably misimplement or misdevelop internet as a weapon that could be incredibly positive for some things, like open science, as I said, but at the same time that brings an outstanding um, range of possibilities for a misuse. Lassange used to say, joking, that some governments, they don't need any special police to spy people because people are keen to share the information with social networks. And, and this is something that I think we need to have an increasing concern. Um, I, I do believe that there's not enough discussion in the civil society nowadays to really understand what does it mean to be open in the internet world in which good things are taking place and a lot of misuse is happening at the same time. So I'm going to go with my third and final sub-chapter of this discussion, which is um, exactly how I call my, my, my intervention today. I think we need to reinvent trust. It cannot be uh, an analog trust borrowed to the digital world has to be a different kind of trust. Um, and that only will happen if we have a community that is better prepared to play with these rules. The main concern that I have is we have communities, highly educated, highly connected, highly digital literate if you want, who might be aware of these threats. But the whole a large audience who use the internet is completely naive of the risk and the measures that need to take place in order to address these problems. And this is a concern that I think we need to um, we need to rethink and we need to take actions on it. And this is a call for governments, this is a call for schools, for universities, for uh, political organizations. And the question is how do we build trust in an environment in which you don't know who is the good and who is the bad. Who is spying with your information? Who is using your personal data to sell you something or to, uh, or for misinterpretation of the information that you provide? 
Do we trust each other? We talk about a lot about openness and sharing and all that. But we know that um, there's a number of uh, bad experiences of people who have been sharing their information, that information changed their identity, and that brings to a large number of discussions. How do we build trust? And this new kind of trust in a post-Snowden era? I believe that it's time for a much more critical digital citizenship. I think it's time to stop talking about smart cities and it's time to start talking about smart citizens. That is the kind of community that we need to have. I remember when Obama said, there's no full security if there's 100% privacy. And I think that is unacceptable. We need to demand that our authorities, whichever government is the one that you are, uh, will provide the guarantees to assure that if your information, your kids' information, your family information is flowing through the landline, through the internet is protected. Otherwise, we should need we need to change the structure that we have. We need to we need to be sure that every information is encrypted. If we cannot trust the companies, we need to be sure that every information is encrypted. We need to have kids who are well aware of these threats within their communities, but also talking with other people. Our kids need to know that they cannot make friends online with unknown people who can be potentially adults or people with bad intentions. So there's a number of things that I think we need to we need to tackle, um, and I don't want to give this only dark position of the internet. I start trying to rise some of the uh, some of the um, positive ways of the internet. Uh, in order to build a new way of trust, we need to share the risk and share the benefits. Then is when we are going to have openness. Um, and finally, because this is an educational environment, I have to say that there is no learning if there is no trust. We need to have a smarter digital citizenship.